she was right. <laughs> On the platform was a sign. On it read, women travelling alone must carry a permit. <laughs> or travel with a conducted party at all times. <laughs> well, I led, nudged myself closer to the Neatley family and their 3,000 books. Because you see, before the three-day train ride to Moose Jaw, before the 17-day steamboat journey all the way from Montreal, well, I'd never been further than Albert Hall. And now here I was, a woman alone, standing on a platform, waiting for her man to come and stake his claim. And I waited. And I stopped you, kind of, just waited. You never came. Oh, he was there. Yes, my Mountie. He was up there. He was looking at me through his binoculars. I imagine he was assessing what he was getting. But what I can't imagine, I cannot imagine what he didn't fancy about me. Oh, was it me hair? Was it me waist? Was it me face? Well, you can't stand forever in a state of disgrace. So I took myself to the boarding house. Mrs. Provero handed me a note. There was a message waiting for me. It said, Sorry, go back. We'll pay. This is nothing new, bustles Mrs. Prothero as she wraps me in her embroidered embrace. Nothing new, referring as much to my newly jilted status as her preferred apron, her tool and toolkit, her uniform and habit, costume, coverall, indispensable. Oh, have some new, some borrowed. I have one nice dress, I have no bridal gown, but I do have aprons. <laughs> and as for men, there'll be others too. Oh, I guarantee, you see, because there's so many of them, and so few of you. Out here, men outnumber women, eight to two. It's nothing new. Mrs. Prothero was kind. She could see how disappointment could turn to bitterness and calcify into brittleness. Mind you, me singing forsaken every day through the entire month of May. I have given it away. <laughs> Burning candles 